All right, uh, here's what you need to know about the dishwasher. Um, cable, pretty short, but works for a countertop. Um, I thought it was dumb, but it's actually on wheels. So it actually like slides in and out and rotates around, which is super helpful for changing these in and out. The bottom one just slides. The top one, um, if you want, just has a latch, but this is a handle and you can pull it out and bring it to the sink. Um, and now for the actual dishwasher part. So this comes off. And now this is where you have to figure out what works and doesn't work for you. So there are two jets uh, right here and right here. And you'll see a little bit later, those are perfect for the like green tubes that the Dr. Brown's bottles come in. The bottle, um, bottle jets, there are two jets per bottle. Uh, so you put your four bottles here. Um, you then have an uh, upper tray where there is a jet in each one of these. Um, sorry, it's opposite. I don't do a lot of filming. And then um, you'd be like, so where are the four other jets? So these jets um, spew water onto the nipple. So there's another four uh, jets that come out from the center. Um, and that's it. And the, So what's... What's cool about that is that you have water that sprays up through the nipple and then kind of down it and then you have water that sprays out onto the nipple so the nipples get very clean. The downside is that there's nothing spraying water from here outwards. So none of the stuff in this ring is really going to get water um, because even when there's nothing in here, um, it's kind of a stretch to get the jet of water up to the top. Um, and there's no magic, right? Like, those are the jets, they spray up, these ones spray out, and that's it, nothing spins. Um, there's a bar in here that is replaceable, um, it comes with a large and a small bar. The, uh, large ball makes, bar makes this taller to accommodate taller bottles, but then you won't have the room up top, uh, as much room up top. And, um, even though this looks pretty tall, uh, it's not um, tall enough because of um, inside here there's a um, there's a cutout that you can't really see uh, on that maybe you can I don't know but there's a bump and this bump that comes out like an inch uh, prevents you from maybe you can see it through the plastic the bump kind of prevents you from getting bottles on that top rack. So you really are pretty much limited to like small items. Um, the controls you can find in the manual, uh, you can t toggle whether or not you're going to do a dishwash, uh, sanitize or rinse or air dry. Um, the pellets are, um, hold on, I'm going to do this one handed. The pellets are uh, very small. Um, so those are the dishwasher pellets. They give you 120 to start. You're then going to go online and buy a bunch. There's a HEPA filter that is under here for the air drying that you can click in and out really easily. Um, and overall, like, this is it. This is what you got. You got to figure out the Rubik's Cube. Um, so in the next chunk, I'll show you how I've loaded it. Um, it also means for the Dr. Brown bottles, and I'll have a small clip maybe, um, there are parts that you still have to hand wash that people complain about that are really comical um, because you're taking a process that normally takes like an hour of labor and turning it into like five minutes and people still get upset about that. Um, I'll also show you how you can load up this one bottle um, and then in a little bit um, I'll show you how to load up uh, the Spectra parts and maybe the LV parts. Um, Alright, yeah, that's it. Bye. Okay, so it took me uh, five minutes or four minutes and forty-eight seconds to basically clean the parts that uh, this thing won't clean. So it's not going to clean this green guy. Um, it's uh, not going to clean the collars, right? 
and it's not going to clean the lids because they just don't fit. Um, that doesn't really bother me. I don't think the bacteria growth on the lids is really all that to be concerned. Um, this is how it stacks up, right? So we have the four bottles in the center, um, the little green tubes go in here. Um, we have the nipples are all on their nipple plates. The collars hang on these little um, pedestals. I have another, you know, bottle that isn't a normal bottle. It can lay right there. There's a gasket for it that I've taken off and is underneath, right? And that'll get wet. And that'll get wet. So these guys are really just hanging out for maybe a rinse, but really just sterilization. Um, and, uh... Yeah, so um, all you gotta do is, let's see if I can do this one-handed. You can pull this forward, take your tablet, and you're gonna put your tablet uh, in this bottom part. You take your lid, and I think, uh, yeah, I think I can make this work. Okay, well, I'm going to have to use both hands for this, so bear with me. So, we can see, you know, this isn't perfect, right? So that green guy, like, came down a little bit, um, but mostly things are in place. I try and keep, um, you see the vertical bar on the green piece, I try and keep that up so that water will run down it. Um, and I try and do a double check to make sure, like, nothing has really drastically moved since I put the collar on um, all the bottles are kind of in the right place um, in fact you'll notice this one shifted so I'm probably going to take the lid off now and readjust that again so now the bottle is back on that a little better um, so to start it, we're just gonna you press and hold. Um, we'll then go. So this will uh, wash, sterilize, and dry. It takes eight to eight minutes. Uh, I hit, you know, hit the wrong button because I'm filming. Classic. So if you just turn it off and then turn it back on. There we go. So in 88 minutes, this will all be clean. And I don't have to really do anything other than five minutes of labor. So this is what I wanted to show off with the jets. Um, primarily, you should be able to see um, the jets with the green thing. So when there's a green thing on it, right, it's not really shooting up to that top layer. When there's not a green thing on it, um, this one does happen to be shooting up into the corner, so like that works. Um, but like, only if there's nothing on it, and it only, it only like, kind of gets there. Right, it's only sort of getting that collar. Um, most of the water here, right, you'll see like this is just hitting this and going down. All of the water for there is coming from that center jet. Whereas here, um, it's actually shooting out and hitting the green piece, um, so that green piece is getting a little wet. And again, like, the side collar, nothing is hitting that side collar. So all the washing, all the rinsing, that collar is only going to get sterilized and dried. Um, and that's fine, because I hand washed it. Um, but those are, this is like the things that I would be concerned about when buying this, is like you're kind of running the risk of whether or not this is going to work out or not. Um, but yeah, that's it washing. There's no spinning, it's just water spraying. So it'll wash for nine minutes, then it'll do three three minute rounds of rinsing, and then sterilization, and then air dry, or uh, like hot air drying. And that's, that's really it. Uh, I will also say it is loud. So like this is the washing sound, um, and then I'll also record the air dryer because the air dryer is pretty loud as well. Okay, bye. So the washing is complete, and now we have uh, 52 minutes to go on the drying cycle. I just wanted to show off, this is the sound that the dryer makes. And it's roughly like 75 audibles.
or decibels, which is um, louder than the washer, to be honest. Um, and remember, decibels are logarithmic, so it's actually like significantly louder. So, yeah, something to know. But yeah, so uh, we could stop it now, um, or I'm going to let it dry, go to bed, and then when we wake up, um, all these parts will be like mostly dry. Um, I'd say for the most part, I could you could easily use them immediately, but I still just leave them out on the drying rack um, because I don't need them immediately. So letting them air dry a little bit longer doesn't really hurt. All right, uh, next up we'll do the spectra parts, but we'll probably do that in the morning. Uh, bye. Okay, so this is uh, how you load up the spectra parts. Um, I don't really rinse anything. Everything just come back super clean. There might be a better way to load this. This is how I do it. I thought maybe the duck bills might be get ruined by this, but so far they seem to be totally fine. Um, I think this is like the third or fourth time I've gone through. Because like water will get like forced through the duck bill. Um, but so far they don't seem to show any kind of damage. Everything comes out clean. Even the... Um, like I thought that uh, this might not get that clean, but it seems to get cleaned fine. Um, like the rings and stuff. Uh, and if you don't have washers, so the washers are because we have the non-OEM, uh, bottles. So they just help the bottle grip more. Um, yeah. So, definitely fits the, uh, breast pump parts, which is pretty great. Um, and I don't have to rinse anything and everything comes out very clean. So, woohoo, party. Okay. So I wanted to show you that um, those jets are kind of useless. I moved the white pieces up to the top. So now there's nothing in these jets and the jets are pretty useless. You might be able to see it better from over here. So they are um, shooting up and kind of in. They're sometimes getting up to this like ridge line right up here. But like, it's not like they're like getting anywhere like up into the tray. Um, they're just basically making it wet on the edge. So if you don't have the Dr. Brown parts, you definitely need to think about, I mean, or you don't have to, but like there are two jets over here that you probably want to put something in, otherwise they're just spraying water around. Um, which like, there's something to be said for that, that like detergent with water spring drops around like will clean stuff but yeah i want you to see that because i feel like they don't talk about that 